Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Happier, Healthier Human podcast. And your host is Muhammad Hanbal, as usual. Today, I have a special guest with me. And in fact, before introducing this guest, I want to say that it was very, very hard for me to come up with uh, uh, the, the layout for this interview because of the amount of achievement that this person achieved. So I wanted to try to get everything in this interview while taking care of your time or making the best management of your time, but we will do our best in this interview. And let me give you a small introduction. The person that I'm sitting with right now, she is a management consultant, she is a swimmer, an author, an author, a best-selling author, and a business psychologist. Is there anything else that I forgot? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you so much for the invite. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> we, we have with me here Denise Kaidelin, and she's also working as a manager at Ernst & Young Company in Frankfurt. Okay. Welcome with us here, Denise. Thank you so much, Mohamed. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to be part of your podcast. So I watched so many podcasts of you, and they are so inspiring. So thank you to having me here, and thank you for watching. <laughs> uh, by the way, maybe you see me just moving with the mic right now, but uh, let's, uh, let, to be honest with you, uh, I always respect my listeners, and I want to tell you that we tried some technical stuff. It didn't work just before the interview, and that's why we had to do it like this way. It's out of our hands. We tried our best right now, but we have to do this interview for you anyway. Okay, because we truly believe that it will be really valuable for you. So, Denise, let me ask you at the beginning, or let me go back with time. Your parents are from Turkey, and you, are, uh, you were born here in Germany. And I'm sure that this was not easy, even though you were born here, but this was not easy because I'm sure that it was something like different cultures and you have to get the best out of each culture in order to move on in your life. So my first question is, how was it looking like to you to grow up here with uh, foreign parents or Turkish parents? Mm. You can take it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so that's a great question. So uh, the, the, most of the question people are asking me, oh, you have a Turkish name, your pa family comes from Turkey. So are you feeling yourself Turkish or German? Mm -hmm. Always these kind of questions. And so I can summarize that. I can say I feel my, my heart is more Turkish. My mind is more German. So I grew up in Germany. I go, went to school, university and so on. And I feel that I have more the German mindset, the structured way of working, thinking. And but when it comes to yeah, my emotional life or my emotional definition of myself, it's then more Turkish. So, yeah. Um, and it was at the beginning or let's say it, it wasn't a big issue for me because I feel home in Germany. I feel home in Turkey as well. I um, grew up with two languages, so I'm, I have two mother tongue and I feel that's a privilege because German culture is so different. Turkish culture is so different and I always um, make the most of it. I try to use the uh, best side of those both cultures. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel, uh, yeah, so I'm a world human. So I don't think that's, that, that Turkish or German. So, but I lived also in other countries and other cities. I worked in different uh, cultures like South Africa, Czech Republic, London. And I, I love to explore different cultures. I love to see the different nuances. Mm -hmm. And um, as a psychologist, I see also it's not just culture. It's also about our personality traits, different personalities. And when all these comes together, it's so inspiring. It's so interesting. And yeah, I I'm, I'm feel lucky that I have these two cultural backgrounds. Sometimes it's also not easy when you go to Turkey and you feel, oh, am I belonging more to here? So shall I go back to G Turkey as well? Because I lived in Istanbul uh, for 10 years. And um, sometimes I'm missing the Turkish culture or the environment, my friends, my family. Um, so they are living there. My mother is still living there now mm. um, after um, uh, she moved from Germany to Turkey. Uh, but when I'm here in Germany, I say, okay, no, I feel home. I, I work, I do my sport, and I feel home as well. So I think <laughs> the most important part is where, where you feel authentic, where you feel yourself, can be yourself. And that's, that's the main compass. And if you feel yourself comfortable, then it's fine. And yeah, I feel myself here comfortable and also there. And yeah, like to explore also different cultures. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, by the way, I just want to mention to everybody, uh, everyone who is watching or listening uh, to the podcast that uh, beside Turkey, Germany, I know that she lived in different countries, also like South Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to get to these uh, phases later in the interview today. And of course, if we're going to speak about the upbringing and how, uh, how it was, you, as we spoke before, this inner conflict between this and that and where you belong and all of these things, mm -hmm. I would love to ask you about one important advice from your own point of view, mm -hmm. that your family gave to you and told you, okay, this is advice that you can use for the rest of your life. Yeah. And and you found it really useful and practical and it helped you really. Yeah, yeah that's a great question. Um, so, <laughs> yes. So my mother always told me, no matter how rich your family would be or uh, with whom you are, so always rely on yourself, always trust yourself, and always be on your own, stay on your own feet. Mm -hmm. And um, I took it serious. That's why I just wanted to ensure that I have a good career, that I, I, I'm successful in my job. I, I try always to do my best, educate myself uh, in order to be independent. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I have my family relationships, friends, and everything. Um, but that was like, okay, so no matter what, what happened in the outside world, you need to trust yourself, you need to be... Um, strong enough to to be independent and um, so that was just that was one and the second one was to say no matter what happens so be yourself be authentic because um, we are all humans we have all our strength sides or our uh, sometimes mm -hmm. weaknesses as well development areas let's say it's in a positive way but it's important to be yourself to be from your heart and uh, yeah she always encouraged me to be myself to be from my heart and I, I feel that's really a great advice from her mm -hmm. because the more I've, I'm myself, the more I feel my passion, the more I'm myself, the more I feel in my element and I can um, use this energy also for other people and for other things. Yeah. Speaking about the element and the other energy and the people, I know that after this interview, mm -hmm. not only by the way, I'm not speaking right now about Happier, Healthier Human podcast only, but I'm speaking also on the level of other young female professionals, like the YFPNs that we are supporting right now and the group of YF, uh, young female professionals. I know that they can look up to you and a lot of things that you did. I know that this interview can really be an inspiration for them. Because let me put it like this way. One of the most important reasons why I was keen on, on hosting uh, Denise in this interview was because even though she is mainly an employee, mm -hmm. but she was all the time trying to do things outside of the norm because let's face the reality guys and I'm, I'm sorry to say this one when someone is entering into the phase of employment mm -hmm. and working at a company uh, as if there is a shutdown happens, this person is not looking to expand outside, is not looking to do things outside of the norm. They are trying most of the time, or most people, they are trying to stick to their day-to-day -day job, go home and do, and just have a routine lifestyle. But you broke all these routines. And by the way, I just remembered that we forgot to show the book to the viewer, <laughs> because we were having this book behind us here. This is her book. You'll find it on Amazon. You'll find it uh, also uh, in um, uh, on Thalia Bookstore if you are in Germany or other uh, bookstores in your countries. And you can find it in digital form. You can find it also in paper form. And it's called, as you see, Out of Comfort Zone. So the title is enough. I believe it's showing you what will be inside the book. So coming back to what we spoke about uh, uh, previously regarding your history as a swimmer. Mm -hmm. So... You are um, an open water swimmer, yeah. pool swimmer, mm -hmm. and you, uh, you competed before. And the best part that I am really curious uh, uh, to know right now is you competed in the 42.4 40, or 43 kilometer yeah. uh, race in one day, which was in Stuttgart. Yeah. And you swam 43 kilometer one day mm -hmm. and you took the first ranking among all the females there. Mm -hmm. And when I'm looking at this scenario as an outsider, I'm a sports, a, a competitive sports athlete 20 years of my life before. But when I'm looking at this achievement right now, I'm wondering, how did she do that? Because definitely it, you pass through situations when you are saying to yourself, I cannot go anymore. I am tired. I'm exhausted. I need to give up and stop. So what made you continue this race? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a great uh, question. So I always ask myself also why I continue and why I did this challenge. So um, my first job was in Stuttgart and in Stuttgart or also in all Germany, parts of Germany, they are annual uh, 24 hours swimming races. And I said, oh my God, I want to test my own limits. That's the best time. It's efficient because just one day, yeah. <laughs> not more, because people are going sometimes to other countries to, to test their own limits, right? And I said, that's the best way to test my own limits. How can I go far? Um, and the first year I swam 33 kilometers. So my, my lucky uh, number is three. And um, also from my mindset, I divide the challenges in three parts. So the first, um, I swam the first time 11 kilometers. The first one was like, okay, the first, so you are motivated. And then I had two, three hours break outside the pool. So you can go out, you can go in, and there's a counting card. And outside there are observers and they are always counting your, your matters. Mm -hmm. And then I went second time at, at, in the water and said, okay, that's the middle one. So the first one is done. That's the middle and then the last one and then I'm done. So I tried to motivate myself like this and always counted my matters because also you need something to focus on. And then uh, I went to sleep, um, had five, six hours sleep and then I went again back to the pool and swam my further 11 kilometers. And I, I was so exhausted, my arms, Everywhere thing was in pain. And I said, okay, 33 kilometers, that's great. That's my limit, that, that was my own record. But then the year after I said, oh, I want to do three kilometers more. So why I not test again my own limit? My, why I can't go further and further? And the second year I did 36. And then the third year I said, oh my God, the third year, so again, three. <laughs> so let's do 39 kilometers. And um, so I, again, divided the challenge into three parts and uh, swam 13 kilometers. And then I went out and then I swam again 13 kilometers and then I went again sleeping and so on. But it was so exhausting, the 39 kilometers. So I felt that in my brain and my body, because it's also so boring, tell you the truth, right? Mm -hmm. So open water is nice. Or when you go, go out jogging or when you're swimming, you see different skins. But, but in the pool, it's just a 50 meters pool and even not outside, it's inside, yeah? You have this air all the time and just swimming, you know? But you just hear your own voice, the water, and that's so monotone, yeah? <laughs> so you're also fighting with your boredom. But then after the 39 kilometers, I said, okay, Denise, so come on, you, you need to stop. Where's the limit, right? So you can't be happy with yourself if you don't want to set your limit. But I didn't want to set myself a limit. I just wanted to go further and further, explore my own potential, my own strengths. Even when my brain say, oh, that's the limit, you can't do more. And then I said, next year I will do 42.4 kilometers. I just wanted to swim the marathon distance in one day. And um, I said, okay, Denise, when you do this, that's a big achievement, then you can be happy and then you can sit and say, okay, you achieved something. So. As you see, I, I just wanted to break all the time my own record. I didn't care what others do, but I just wanted to be better, a better self of myself. I wanted to increase my mindset, uh, strengthen of my mindset. I wanted to increase my endurance and just prove myself that I can do more than I think, than my body think. And the last year, so I, I moved at this time to Frankfurt. I didn't have my own house anymore in, Frank in Stuttgart. Um, I told to my friend that I will visit her in the nighttime, will sleep for a few hours because I do this crazy thing again. And then I just directly drive from Frankfurt to Stuttgart, 3 p.m. start. And then again, I wanted to divide it in three parts. And that was the first time in my life that I swam nonstop 15 kilometers for five hours. And after this five hours, I felt so exhausted. My body was in pain again. I had headache because you can imagine five hours in this pool with this pool air, mm -hmm. chlorine, and um, also the googles. You know, you feel the googles pressure. So it was blue. After five hours, it was really blue. <laughs> so, um, and then I went out. I had two hours break. I uh, drink my carb, carb powder, water, my banana, mm -hmm. and all the energy gels that I prepared. So, and I tried to mentally prepare myself for the next second round. And I said, if I do 30 kilometers before midnight or before 
3 a.m. in the morning, then, then it's a big achievement for me. Then I feel, okay, the most of the challenge I have it done. And then when I went again, second time in the water, I felt immediately cold because my body was so exhausted, so tired, and I felt so weak. And I said, oh my God, how can I do again the next 15 kilometers? Again, five hours. And uh, I started at 10 p.m. in the evening. And after two hours, people went out. Um, it was more empty. And yeah, I really asked myself, why am I doing this? I have so pain. I went to the toilet. I had cramps in my feet. My nose was bleeding. I, I felt that my body is really feeling cold. You know, it was like, it was a pain. It was a painful process. And mentally, I said, Denise, you can do more than you think. Don't let you stop uh, from these body uh, symptoms. Because without pain, you can't succeed. So that was always my motivation. And I just still counted the, the matters. I tried to focus myself. I tried to be optimistic. And I was also somehow in, in this flow moment. And, but I feel the pain on my shoulders. It was so painful. And then I went out to the toilet and then I saw a trainer and asked him, it's so painful, it's so burning. Is it normal? I don't want to have any long-term consequences because of the swim. I've, I, I'm ambitious, but I don't want to be stupid. Mm. Uh, do I have any risk of surgery or something? And then the trainer said, no, you have all the lactic acid on your shoulders. That's normal. So all the lactic acid is collected. Don't worry, you can keep going but it will take you a few days to normalize yourself. I said, okay, cool. <laughs> that was exactly what I wanted to hear, right? Mm -hmm. Because I just wanted to continue despite my pain, mm -hmm. despite all my tiredness. I continued and uh, then I had these 30 kilometers. And then I went to my friend's house in the night. When I went home, wow, I saw a surprise pasta. She'd make pasta for me. I ate this pasta and I was so exhausted. I felt I'm in the end of my nerve, in the end of my energy. I can't go in. But I was then so happy to feel her support, especially in these kind of extreme situations. You feel alone, you know, because you think, oh, why am I doing this? And I'm so feeling exhausted. I can't do this. I can't do that. So you have also these kind of hurdles in your brain. And it's so amazing when you feel the support from other people and you feel you are not alone. And then I went to bed. I, of course, took some painkillers, <laughs> some aspirin and so on, with the hope that I feel better maybe in a few hours. And then when I went to bed, she prepared um, yeah, heater bags for me because it was cold for me. So I felt again the support and uh, the motivation. And I thought, okay, so Denise, just sleep. Don't think about three or four hours later. Just sleep and have a rest. And then you will check again how you feel yourself. In the morning when I woke up, I had again pain everywhere, headache and everything. And I felt, okay, I need external motivation. I need an external push to continue. And we had a WhatsApp swimming group. I said, guys, I'm end of my energy. I completed 30 kilometers, but I need to complete next 12 kilometers and I need someone to push me. And then luckily one friend responded and said, okay, let's meet in half an hour in the pool. Mm -hmm. We will swim the first meters together. And that was again a push. So you need also in these kind of challenges, you, you need to know about your body, about your mind. And um, then you need to know how, what, what is helping you. Mm. Otherwise, uh, of course, I could also say, okay, now 30 kilometer done. But I was so focused on my vision, on my goal. I wanted to beat myself. I just was solution oriented and say, okay, I need an external push. Okay, let's meet in the pool. Mm. <laughs> and then... Um, I went into the pool again and had the last 12 kilometers, 12.4 kilometers. The last meters, you, you can't imagine how painful it was. I even couldn't um, yeah, move my arms. I just went with my feet. Mm -hmm. The last meters, just with my feet, but I just wanted to have this 42.4 kilometers. And at the end, I was done. <laughs> I was really done also with my body, but... I could No, no, continue, continue. I want to say something. Yeah. Sorry for interruption. <laughs> if you are sitting beside me right now, you will see the fire in her eyes already when she's speaking, by the way. You cannot maybe see it. I don't know if you see it in the camera or not, but I see it when, when she's speaking about it. Sorry for interruption. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the end, I was so happy. You know, you, you can't imagine the um, happiness hormones, the adrenaline. It's like, uh, yeah, you are in a flow moment, flow situation. Despite your pain, 
you feel the energy, you feel the focus, and you feel proud of yourself and say, yes. okay, I, I did it, I made it. Mm. And um, yeah, that was that was a moment which I not forget. That was the painful, the most painful, the most exhausting 24 hours I had I had in my life. And then I said, okay, that that's enough. So I can be proud of myself. I can be proud of this achievement. And um, of course, then I, I searched for other challenges in my life, other swim challenges like cold water immersions. But this was for me, okay, tick tick box. I did it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's also important, you know, when you achieve something, also to be happy with that and not just want more and more and more and more. It's okay to also say, okay, that that's fine now. I have a checkbox and I can search also for another challenges in life. Mm -hmm. So that was for me a, a nice moment where I said, okay, that that was great <laughs> to achieve it. So I'm repeating it again, and I want to repeat it over and over. Nobody can see how your face look like, and I mean it, mm -hmm. how your face look like when you are speaking about this experiment right now. Okay, mm -hmm. your your eyes were full of emotions. Your face was full of emotions. Yeah, they were shiny. It's always amazing when the people are speaking about their achievements or their challenges in their lives because it makes them really go outside of the normal routine, and it makes them feel that they are alive. Yeah. Okay. So, and by the way, I insist on doing this always with the people, no matter my clients or the normal people that I meet with. I always used to watch their body language when they are speaking and you're asking them general questions versus when you are asking them about uh, something good that happened to them several days or something that they are proud of mm -hmm. and how their body language uh, changes differently and their face starts, sh their eyes start shining and all of these things and you feel that they became alive. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I feel here when I'm sitting. Your energy is overtaking me at the meantime. Watch out. <laughs> so speaking about the, the, the swimming, we're still in this part. After this incredible story, I don't even claim that I can understand what the pain that you've passed through. What exactly is advice that you can give to the people who are watching us or listening to us right now that uh, that they can use in order that they can be in a consistent or as much as possible in a good uh, mental and emotional state? Yeah. Um, first of all, I would say we are always in a competitive environment, right? Always we have competition in, in sports, in, in job, in, in business, in private life. And what I did with this challenge was I didn't care what others do. I just care about myself and I knew that I can do better. So believe in yourself and just try to be a better person and compare yourself with yourself because then you can focus your energy much better because so, mu so many times we are comparing ourselves with others and there will be always better, richer, more successful, faster people than you. But the most important part is when you watch to your mirror, are you a better self, a better version of yourself compared to yesterday, compared one week before, compared one year before? And that was my focus. I just believe in myself and I just wanted to prove myself that I can do more than I think and than I do. And um, I try to focus myself on the future. What I want to be, how can I use my energy right now to be in the state? What can I do better? What are my strengths, but what are also my development areas? And how can I optimize them, but not just always in this optimizing trip, also sometimes accept who you are, accept also your development areas, and maximize more your strengths. Um, I think that's also important. Just uh, accepting and knowing what you want to achieve, setting goals, and going, go for it, but despite pain. Because pain is normal, right? Uh, otherwise, if I wouldn't feel pain, if you wouldn't feel pain, if you wouldn't feel pain in challenging situations, then we wouldn't be humans. So that's what makes us human, to feel pain, to feel sometimes weak, to feel sometimes tired, right? But the most important part is how we are dealing with these situations, how we are dealing with these challenges, with pain, with, tire, with our tired body, with our tired mind, how we are coping with that and how we still can motivate us to continue for our vision, to continue following our purpose, our passion. And 
I think that's that's important, the inner compass. So having an own vision, own passion, own goals, and following this path, despite challenges, despite weaknesses, because that makes us human, and that's the way how we improve, how we are improve ourselves step by step. I'm sure that a lot of people right now are curious to ask this question. And the question which pops up into my mind directly is, you have a lot of passion towards sports and towards swimming. Mm -hmm. And in general, you are doing very, very well as a swimmer and you are competing and you are achieve, achieving great success there. So why you didn't continue there? Why you didn't continue to be a professional swimmer and all of these things and, and continue in this area? Because um, as we stated before at the beginning of this interview, mm. Um, uh, Denise is working as a manager and leader inside at, a, at Ernst & Young company in Frankfurt. And um, uh, this is a totally different field. Yes, you can borrow some skills from the swimming yeah. and the mental toughness, mm -hmm. but it's a different field than the swimming. So why did you leave uh, this area mm -hmm. or, for example, the sports area? Why you didn't continue there? Mm -hmm. And also, what attracted you to choose this specific position that you are working at right now? Because as far as I know, you are a talent and change management consultant or leader inside the Ernst & Young. Yeah. So why didn't you continue in swimming? And that's say, I mean, professionally. Mm -hmm. And why at the same time you chose this specific position or area? Or did it chose you by itself? I don't know, you can say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't say I, I um, l left swimming. Swimming is still in my life, so I'm swimming more than 20 years. It's still my passion. Um, but everybody knows with swimming, you can't earn money. <laughs> you can't, uh, you can't um, yeah, live a life what you want to achieve. And I, I just, um, starting with 11, so uh, I had a stressful um, phase in my life. And that's also the part why I started with swimming, to, to deal, cope with challenges better. Swimming helped me to cope with those challenges. And, and th at this time, I was so interested to swimming, but also to psychology. So why I'm feeling sad, why I'm feeling like this, why people acting like this, why my parents acting like this. So I just asking myself so many questions, psychological questions, and tried, wanted to try understand myself, but also other people. And I tw um, started with 11, 12 uh, reading psychology books. And then I decided, okay, I want to be a psychologist. I want to understand others better, myself better, and I want to help people. I want to support people. I want to support, support also myself to be a better version of myself. And I want to also support others to be a better version of themselves. That was then also my vision. Sports helped me to cope with um, challenges much better to cope um, yeah, with, with challenges better, but also uh, to feel myself stronger. So it gives me so many, much things, which I also still use in my business life. But I, I knew that just sport or just the direction of sport wouldn't define me. So I just wanted also to do something which um, makes me also more mentally, improve myself mentally and can um, yeah, realize my passion and can just help others as well, not just from the sports angle, but just also from the psychological angle, from the consulting angle. And during my psychology study, I um, did some several internships and I decided to go on with the business psychology area because psychology focuses on more the past, on your problems, on pain. But coaching, for example, Focus more on, on the future, on your potential, how you can leverage your strengths. And this area was so ama amazing for me that I decided to study and do my master's in the business psychology area. Because in the business psychology area, you are speaking more about coaching, you are speaking more about training, about change management, about talent management. And all the goal of those areas are to leverage the strengths of people, to maximize the performance, to be a better version of yourself. And the other side of psychology, of course, is also important, but I felt myself more um, in this area of business psychology. And I love uh, to work in different projects, 
having different client challenges. Uh, and that's why then I decided to start as a consultant because I don't like so much monotony. So I like to always have different challenges, different questions, finding different answers to those uh, questions. And that's why I'm more than 10 years now in the consulting area. And yeah, it simulates me mentally. I learn always new things. I'm completely uh, engaged with different kind of people, different kind of clients. And uh, I enjoy it really because it's about people. It's about people management, change management, supporting people in their transformation processes, supporting companies in their transformation processes, uh, also talent management. So how you can coach someone to maximize their success, their performance, how you can improve the development areas. And all these questions, is, they are also yeah my passion and I, I like really this area as well. So now uh, I try to, f I still try to find a balance. Um, I never gave up swimming because I thought, okay, that's for me, that's, that's my lifestyle. That's my personality, part of my personality. And I try to combine it. So I, I'm still working. I'm a bu in a busy consulting life, but still swimming, joining world championships, joining European championships. And uh, of course, it's not easy to balance both because as a business consultant, you are busy, always traveling. Of course, now in Corona times, not so much traveling, but mm -hmm. before it was so tough to keep in shape, to train, but uh, to all do the consulting work. Um, but yeah, I have the feeling... Both sides are defining me. It's part of my passion and it's part of myself. Can you tell me one specific uh, example from the business life? I'm just taking where you stopped right mm -hmm. now or continuing where you stopped. Um, one situation in your business life where, um, where you, let's say, it was uh, surprise, something surprising happened, some life incident or, for example, career incident happened that impressed you or, for example, made you laugh or weird. Something, for example, that happened in the past 10, 15 years, no matter if it was Germany or, for example, South Africa or anything else. Do you remember anything or recall any, any situation that you would like uh, to, to share with the people? Mm. Um, so you mean a challenging situation or like a... Open-minded situation. Situation that happened in, in, in your career in, yeah. in, uh, while you were a consultant. Mm. Si situation that happened in your career while you were a consultant, yeah. but at the same time, it was uh, something that uh, uh, surprising. You know, sometimes, for example, you expect mm. the people to react in a specific way, but then they react in a different way. Mm. Or some funny situation happened in your mm. career, something unexpected. I have a lot of things that I can <laughs> share with you which were funny in my career in the past when I was in the corporate. Yeah. But uh, if you have something in your head, if you don't have anything in your head specifically, we can uh, just move on to the next point. It just mm. came into my head right now. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, I think um, I had so many different clients, maybe more than 20 30 different clients or more <laughs> and so each situation is unique each situation is surprising and it's surprising uh, the reactions to see the re reactions of people uh, most of the time in challenging situations so when you are in a challenging situation um, you are going more to your deepest personality and just uh, showing the traits that you have um, and it's less controlled and one situation was that um, yeah we had a small project mistake and uh, the client was really so angry that uh, they, they, they shouted to us, they put all the documents like this and threw it to us. And at this moment, it was for me shocking. And I said, oh my God, how can I handle the situation right now? I felt overwhelmed. So that was a challenging uh, mot um, moment for me. Um, but I really learned so much of the situation mm -hmm. afterwards. I said, okay, the next time if something happens like this, um, I, I still need to uh, um, protect my self-respect, protect the respect to others, and uh, show my borders and say, okay, this situation or this style of communication is not my expected style, so please leave it here and let's communicate another time, um, rather than to uh, go to this communication style and try to uh, adjust it or try to solve the situation in this, at this moment. Um, so in, in the private life, of course, you have these kind of experiences and then you, you try to cope with that. But in the business life, it was for me completely surprising to have this kind of situation. <laughs> Sorry. 
Can, can you hear me here? Can everybody hear this specific part that you spoke about? I, I, I truly want to stress, I'm sorry for interrupting you, I truly want to stress on this one, specifically uh, if you are a, a female professional, okay, or in general, if you are someone, no matter if you are a female or a male who is watching this episode right now or listening to it as a podcast, you have all the time to focus, no matter what happens, you are keeping your self-respect. And that's why I was right now happy when you started to speak about this topic mm -hmm. because a lot of people will benefit from it. Mm -hmm. I want you even please, uh, Denise, when you are looking here to the camera, yeah. to start giving advice to males, females, anybody who is taking it easy regarding, for example, uh, their, uh, uh, what's called, uh, saving their face or their self-respect because they need to put money on, uh, bread on the table as they are speaking about. Just say something to them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think that's really important, the self-respect, uh, respect also others. And um, there will be always challenging situations. There will be always people where you feel, oh, um, maybe you did something wrong. And it's okay to do also something, sometimes mistakes. So that's okay. Um, but it's not okay to um, allow to treat yourself in an unrespected situation, in an unrespected manner. And uh, that's what I learned also from this process. So I said, um, if something happens like this again, it's okay to be authentic, to stay authentic, to also to say sorry about that, or sorry, I did a mistake, but it's not okay to love that you are handled in an unrespected manner. And now that's what I try to follow. Um, I try always to yeah, protect my borders and say, okay, you, we can go here, but not far, far more far away. So, and um, I think that's important to define you for yourself as well um, to, and reflect for yourself uh, in what extent maybe you have some mistakes, but in what extent you accept the communication style and whatnot. And it's also okay to say, okay, it's also okay to say no, or it's also to say, okay, let's stop this conversation right now and continue when everybody is in a normal situation. <laughs> it, yeah? <laughs> yeah, so it, it took me also energy. It took me also years, you know. And what you know what I did? After five years, five years later, this person contacted me and we had a nice conversation. And I felt I grew from this experience. I felt I worked on myself as well. And then I told him that when the situation would occur again, I would just stand up and just would leave the door, the room, and would say, okay, uh, no matter who you are, no matter if you are a president or someone, um, I wouldn't accept this kind of conversation. No matter if I'm a consultant or you are a client or something, but human values, human values comes first. Mm. And yeah, so it was a great moment that I could share my thoughts with him and with, with, and now I feel in peace. Now I feel more grew from this experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that's always what humans happens, right? With pain, you grow. With pain, you have some reflections and you go every time one step further mm -hmm. with all these experiences. Focus on the gold that you are getting or the gold, I'm saying gold, not gold, gold that you are getting from this uh, uh, episode right now because I traveled uh, more than 100 kilometer only one way in order that I'm getting her to speak in front of you and to share this advice right now because I believe really that what Denise has is something special and it can add value to a lot of people not only females who can look up to her as a young leader like them but also males anybody can benefit from what she's speaking about right now so speaking about your book I will get it again <laughs> Speaking about your book, yeah. the, the book itself, uh, it's not natural for someone who is working at a company to come and say, I want to invest time over my busy schedule, uh, uh, um, uh, swimming mm -hmm. and consulting and this one and that and these things to come and say, I want to write a book. So why did you write this book? Why are you making your life harder? <laughs> <laughs> why I'm making my life harder? <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, so why I wrote this book, so it, it has a big story. Um, I always like to go out of my comfort zone. I always uh, like to challenge myself and to explore my own limits. And um, so two years ago, I started with, with um, cold water immersions because my dream was to uh, swim in the English Channel. Mm. 
And um, I find, found a team, a relay team, and then we decided to go to this challenge. And 20 years ago, I had hypothermia. So I lost my mind, my, uh, I lost my control of my body in a cold water, in a race, during a race. And um, I was in a hospital and it took me time to normalize myself. So I had a really risky situation. And I had a phobia to cold water. But then I decided to face this challenge and to face my fears and starting with cold water immersions, cold water trainings for my dream to cross the English Channel. And uh, I started to swim in the middle of winter in German lakes, in Austria lakes, Swiss lakes, because sometimes it was too uh, hot here. <laughs> so I, I searched different cold lakes to have this uh, experience and have this training effect. And it was so intense. The process was so intense. Um, I also recognized that I can't do just training. I need to train mentally as well. I need to prepare myself mentally. I started with meditation. I started with Wim Hof breathing exercises. It was so intense. I felt that I changing my mind, I changing my body, I reprogramming my body and mind. And it was so intense that I started to write a blog. I started to um, create my own website, uh, www. Uh, out of our comfort zone.com. And I really step by step shared my old stories. How was my first training? How was my second training? I just shared because I felt so intense feelings that <laughs> I couldn't leave it by myself, these kind of intense feelings and thought processes. I just wanted to share it. And then I received so many positive feedbacks. They said, wow, that's so inspiring. Oh, after reading your blog, I started to have cold showers. I started to swim. So it was so great to see this kind of uh, feedback. And then I decided to continue to write, writing and decided for myself, okay, one day I want to write a book where I can combine my psychological background, um, where I can combine swimming, some meditational methods. Um, so I just wanted to put all the ideas together, not just sports, but also business life, psychology, and everything. And then I created a model, out of comfort zone model, uh, you can see it also in this book, mm -hmm. where I say, so we have our comfort zone, but when we go out of our comfort zone, we are in the fear zone. We have fear to go out of comfort zone. And um, after fear, when we face our fears and go out of our comfort zone, then we learn new things. We learn to cope with these new situations. You explore yourself. Uh, and learn new dimensions of yourself. Isn't it so interesting? And then you are continue in the growth zone. So that means your out of comfort zone becomes, becomes your growth zone and it becomes your new comfort zone. So you all the time expanding your comfort zone. Because after you learn to cope with your out of comfort zone, then it becomes your new comfort zone and you are growing as a person. And it was so inspiring, this journey, because um, I crossed the English Channel, and not just the English Channel, I crossed with my team the most challenging area, a uh, route of North Channel, with toxic jellyfishes. The water temperature was 12 degrees. It was freezing cold. Then I swam in, um, in South Africa from Robben Island to Cape Town. It was the first time in my life I did my solo swim, two and a half hours in 13 degrees of cold water with the risk by being attacked from white sharks. And I collect all these stories and I said, okay, now I'm in lockdown in South Africa because I was there for my business assignment and I just stay at home and I can't do swimming, I can't do nothing anymore. I'm just sitting at home out of my comfort zone because South Africa was out of my comfort zone. The lockdown is out of our comfort zone, everything. And then I decided, okay, that's the real moment. How can I transform the pain into a productive way? How can I transform this situation in a creative energy? Because of course, like every one of us, I was frustrated. I had my fears. I was in a foreign country. I just wanted to explore the business world there. I just wanted to go there. And then I, sit, I just uh, was in the lockdown situation. And then I said, okay, that's the best way to transform the pain into a successful move and just write my, my own story. And maybe with the hope to inspire also other people, with the hope to support other people in their thought process and be open, be authentic. So in this book, you can find 
my real life story. It's not a fictional story. Uh, with all my strengths, but with all my development areas, with all my weaknesses, you can see everything there. I opened my heart and I shared my challenging moments and how I deal with that. Um, not just my own thought process, but I also combined methods like meditation from Dr. Joe Dispenza, breathing exercises from Wim Hof, um, different kind of professor inputs, insights. So it's a combination of my real life story and also a combination of insights which would help you to face challenges, not just in sports, but also everywhere, because we are our body, our mind, our soul is one, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you are in a sports situation challenge or uh, in a business challenge or in a private life challenge situation. So your coping strategies remaining the same everywhere. Do you have, I know that any writer is considering his work from A to Z, from the first page until the last page is the best thing ever for him or her. <laughs> yeah. um, is there any specific part in this book which is very near to your heart more than the other parts? Mm. Yeah, there is one part. It's, it's more near to my heart because I open my heart there. Um, I open my, my weak side there. And so I think nothing great or nothing great comes from comfort zone. And my swim passion comes also not from a comfort zone. I, I describe here a time, a phase where I was really out of my comfort zone psychologically. And then I started to find a way to cope with that, to deal with the situation. And I describe it in a more much detail. And that's the time where I really opened my heart. And it took me really some time to decide, OK, do I want really open my heart? Do I want really write this down and open it to the world? <laughs> or should it be still my secret? And then I decided, no, I, I will write it down um, in order to also give other people the feeling that they are not alone with their own challenges. So everybody has different challenges. Everybody has a different story. You have your own story. You have your own story. And based on your own story, based on your own challenge, you have your own achievements because you have a way how you cope with your challenge. You have a way how you cope with your challenges. And we are also now a best-selling author, uh, speaker, and everything. Your achievements have a story. And all the stories comes not just from the comfort zone. It comes also from out of the comfort zone. And yeah, so if you like to learn more about this, so <laughs> you can check. <laughs> the people claim all the time that I'm inspiring uh, them, but uh, to be honest, I'm truly inspired today to be sitting with her and listening to this. I'm just sitting like you, uh, just sitting in order that I'm listening and seeing her perspective regarding these things. And it's really amazing all the time when you are sitting around people who are having the capability to go outside of their comfort zone mm -hmm. and at the same time to dream. To, to do things outside of the norm, it inspires not only you, you are inspiring and lighting the way to the others, including me and the other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm really appreciating it. And I know that it can take hours and hours to speak. I'm not giving you your right, tr truly, because we are trying to condense all of these experiments in something like 45 minutes or something. But while in reality, I believe that we need hours and hours to speak about you because you really have a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can do it at another time. Maybe we can do something live also to the people. Yeah. And, and, I, I would be honored. Mm -hmm. And um, if there is anything before we close, if there is anything that you want to tell them or mm -hmm. to, uh, to advise, to share, or even to say goodbye, say okay. whatever you want. The last thing that you want to say. Yeah, Mohamed, it was a pleasure to be part of, of your podcast. So I'm really glad that uh, the journey also um, showed us uh, that, that we can now um, speak together and uh, speak about those topics because I know you are also uh, working on how to be happier, how to be um, increase your well-being and motivation and so on. And these topics are so important. Um, beside our business, busy life and so on, the pressure is always increasing in our life. And uh, we are not in an yeah, easy situation. Um, we have the pressure outside from the world. We have our internal pressures, in, inner pressures. We have our own expectations. And um, so that's great what you are doing in, in, in your area as well. Um, you increase the mental power, you increase the well-being, and that's also what I try to do in my business, but also in my private life, to increase 
my own resilience to increase, to support others, to increase their own resilience, increase their own well-being. And, and my main message is start always first with yourself. So starting with yourself doesn't mean that you are an egoistic person, that you are a self-centered person, but um, start with yourself. Think about what makes you happy. How do you want to live your life? How you can gain energy from your activities? And if you start with yourself, if you are happy with yourself, then you can make others happy, then you can serve others. And um, that, that's my main message. So I think everybody needs to know what's their passion. So what's your passion? And, and go and follow your passion. Go for it. And then magic can happen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Denise. I'm really happy to have you here with me as a guest um, it was a big honor for me. I'm looking forward to see you or to speak again with you to our audience in the future. And I hope that it was a, a good and useful episode for you and see you in the next time. Bye. <laughs>